Nimrod is a legendary biblical figure in the books of Genesis and Chronicles. Nimrod was born into a new world, recently recreated by God, after his judgment had rendered the old world devoid of much human and animal life. Nimrod is an important character in Genesis. According to the Bible, he founded two of the most powerful empires in history, Assyria and Babylon. Despite his leadership skills, Nimrod's actions led many people away from God. At first, the new world was free from the evil that existed in the pre-Diluvian world. Unfortunately, this innocence did not last very long. The Prince of Darkness quickly began to plant seeds of rebellion in the fertile hearts of the human survivors. Satan handpicked Nimrod to transform the new world into a cauldron of rebellion. Nimrod in the Bible was the great grandson of Noah through the line of Cush. Genesis chapter 10 verses 7 through 12. The sons of Cush were Seba, Havilah, Sabta, Rehama, and Sabdika. And the sons of Rehama were Sheba and Dedan. Now Cush fathered Nimrod. He became a mighty one on the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Therefore it is said, like Nimrod, a mighty hunter before the Lord. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, Erech, Akkad, and Kalni in the land of Shinar. From that land he went to Assyria and built Nineveh, Rehoboth Ur, Kela, and reason between Nineveh and Kela. That is the great city. The Bible calls Nimrod a mighty hunter before the Lord. It is speculated that he may have been of giant stature, which could explain why so many legends have been attributed to him and why people of his time followed him. Nimrod was a mighty one on the earth, but not in a good way. He ruled over Babel the first organized human rebellion against God. The name Nimrod itself means let us rebel. We read, Like Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. Nimrod is not being complimented in this context. As a result of Nimrod, God was offended. He was not a hunter of animals. He was a hunter of men. A warrior. It was through his ability to fight and kill and rule ruthlessly that his kingdom of the Euphrates Valley City States was consolidated. Voice. Men no longer trusted in God, but rather in their prowess and ability, an attitude to which Nimrod tried to convert the whole world. Genesis 10 provides a family tree that tracks the lineage of 70 male descendants from Noah's three sons, Japheth, Ham, and Shem. Shem, Ham, and Japheth became the fathers of the nations. Generally speaking, the descendants of Japheth primarily represent nations and lands that are situated northeast, north, and northwest of the land of Israel. The descendants of Ham represent nations that are situated to its south, while the descendants of Shem are mainly situated to the east of the land of Israel, making the land of Israel into the center of the world. Nimrod is mentioned three times in the Bible. Genesis 10 is the first and most detailed passage. The next time Nimrod appears is in a genealogy at the beginning of 1 Chronicles. His brief listing in 1 Chronicles chapter 1 verse 10 states, Cush was the father of Nimrod, who became a mighty warrior on earth. The final passage also only mentions Nimrod in passing. Micah chapter 5 verses 5 through 6. This one, the Messiah shall be our peace. When the Assyrian invades our land and tramples on our citadels and in our palaces, then shall we raise against him seven shepherds and eight princes, an overpowering force among men. They shall devastate the land of Assyria with the sword, 
and the land of Nimrod within her own gates. According to this passage in Micah, Assyria was still regarded as the land of Nimrod hundreds of years later, at least by the people of God. However, we learn very little about Nimrod. The Tower of Babel After the destruction of the world by the flood, the next incident that affected God deeply was the building of the Tower of Babel. People wanted to build a tower that reached into God's sphere of heaven, effectively to challenge heaven. The text says that they wanted to build a name for themselves. Genesis chapter 11 verses 1 through 9 Now the whole earth spoke one language and used the same words, vocabulary. And as people journeyed eastward, they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they settled there. They said one to another, Come, let us make bricks and fire them thoroughly in a kiln, to harden and strengthen them. So they used brick for stone as building material, and they used tar, bitumen, asphalt for mortar. They said, Come, let us build a city for ourselves and a tower whose top will reach into the heavens, and let us make a famous name for ourselves, so that we will not be scattered into separate groups and be dispersed over the surface of the entire earth as the Lord instructed. Now the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one unified people, and they all have the same language. This is only the beginning of what they will do in rebellion against me, and now no evil thing they imagine they can do will be impossible for them. Come, let us, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, go down, and there confuse and mix up their language, so that they will not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the surface of the entire earth, and they stopped building the city. Therefore the name of the city was Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of the entire earth, and from that place the Lord scattered and dispersed them over the surface of all the earth. We know roughly what the tower would have looked like. Such a tower was called a ziggurat, a great brick structure with staircases extending heavenwards. On the top of such towers, there were usually astrological signs, but it was not so much for worshipping stars that Nimrod, king of Babylon, or Babel built that tower. It was more to express his own power and grandeur. The Tower of Babel offended God very profoundly. He said that if he let them continue, there was no telling where it would end. So God gave the gift of tongues for the first time to confuse the people. They could no longer understand each other. From then on, humanity split, scattering and speaking different languages. There is an interesting footnote to the story of Babel. Among the people scattered at Babel were a group who climbed over the mountains to the east and eventually settled when they reached the sea. They became the great nation of China. Chinese culture goes right back to that day. They left the area of Babel before the cuneiform alphabet replaced the picture language of ancient Egypt. All languages were pictorial, right up to the time of Babel. The language they took to China, they put down in picture form. The amazing thing is that it is possible to reconstruct the story from Genesis 1 to 11 by looking at the symbols which the Chinese used to describe different words. Nimrod was undoubtedly a powerful charismatic hero figure of the ancient world who actually attempted to build a tower to heaven, hoping to thwart the plans of God. It's easy to understand why numerous myths and legends have been created about Nimrod, given his reputation. Nevertheless, despite his strength and grandeur, Nimrod's power ultimately proved insignificant, 
because God's power is greater than any human's and cannot be hindered. Although Nimrod was an impressive hunter in the eyes of the Lord, wisdom dictates that humility towards God is essential. James chapter 4 verse 6 But he gives us more and more grace through the power of the Holy Spirit to defy sin and live an obedient life that reflects both our faith and our gratitude for our salvation. Therefore it says, God is opposed to the proud and haughty, but continually gives the gift of grace to the humble who turn away from self-righteousness. Babylon Babel is often thought to be the same as Babylon. In fact, some Bible translations actually list this city as Babel rather than Babylon. Genesis chapter 10 verse 10 And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, and Erech, and Akkad, and Kelni, in the land of Shinar. The beginning of his kingdom was Babylon, and Erech, and Akkad, and Kelni, in the land of Shinar. Babylon is the capital of the empire which would eventually destroy Judah. It is in southern Mesopotamia. The Tower of Babel and Solomon's Temple are possibly the most well-known biblical structures. The Old Testament covers nearly 2,000 years of history prior to Christ. The biblical structure has captivated subsequent generations, despite the fact that everyone has a different idea of what it used to look like. The Tower of Babel was built in the heart of Babylon's thriving metropolis. However, Babylon, known as the city of cities to the ancients, gradually fell into ruin. There is another interesting footnote to the story of Babel. The effect of tongues also takes place on the day of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit descended on 120 disciples in the temple as they gathered in Solomon's porch for morning prayers at 9 a.m. The gift of tongues accompanying the outpouring was a reversal of God's judgment at the Tower of Babel, Genesis 11, allowing people of many ethnicities to hear Peter's discourse. Approximately 3,000 people were added to the church due to their repentance and baptism. Many would later return to their native countries including Rome, to propagate the word. Cities are generally regarded as bad places in the Bible. The first mention, which is usually significant, associates them with the Lion of Lamech and the manufacture of weapons for mass destruction. They concentrate people, therefore sinners, therefore sin. With less community and more anonymity, Vice and crime flourish. There is more lust, prostitution, and anger, violence in urban than rural communities. The two sins that are singled out here are greed and pride. Both are related to the idolatry of money. Since it is impossible to worship both God and mammon, Luke chapter 16 verse 13, it is easier to forget the maker of heaven and earth in a prosperous city. Self-made men worship their own creator. Arrogant shows and architecture. Buildings are often monuments to human ambition and achievement. Such was the Tower of Babel by the Euphrates River, sitting on the road between Asia, Africa, and Europe. This city later became the capital of a large and powerful empire, especially under Nebuchadnezzar, a ruthless tyrant who destroyed babies, animals, and even trees when conquering new territory. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 17 For the violence done to Lebanon will overwhelm you. The destruction of the animals will terrify you. On account of human bloodshed and the violence done to the land, to the city, and all its inhabitants, Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 17 Though the fig tree does not blossom, and there is no fruit on the vines, though the yield of the olive fails and the fields produce no food, 
though the flock is cut off from the fold, and there are no cattle in the stalls. A key but subtle theme hinges on this word, east. God sent Adam and Eve east when he pushed them out of the garden. When Cain was expelled from God's presence for slaughtering his brother, the text says he also went east. The word east represents a journey away from God. So when we see the people gather in a valley in the land of Shinar in the east, the author is implying that the next scene will take humanity further away from God. To construct a city was to build civilization. To construct a tower was to construct a religious order. Both would be man-centered efforts, rather than God-centered ones. They were embracing a type of humanism. Instead of pursuing God's agenda of multiplying and filling the earth, they wanted to do everything they could to avoid being scattered across the globe. In some ways, they desired what most teenagers today desire, independence, with all of its benefits, while still enjoying the benefits of living at home under parental supervision. In this scene, humanity says to God, keep putting food on my table and clothes on my back, but don't tell me what to do. Continue to bless me, but do not instruct me.